What I'm talking about is simply Hey folks, this is Alexander Wynn, the founder of Edgeworks Entertainment and creator of Terra Genesis. And if you know anything about Terra Genesis, it's probably that it's based on real science. It's a huge part of the game, and it's a huge part of how we talk about the game. And today, I want to talk about why. Now, there are a lot of ways that Terra Genesis is based in real science, but one of the ones that I enjoy the most, and I know a lot of players enjoy the most, is the planets. A lot of games are based on Mars, but for the most part, they're not really based on Mars. They're just red landscapes. They could just as easily be Utah. But in Terra Genesis, we use real NASA maps for every planet and moon in the solar system. So when you watch the sea levels rise on Mars in your game, you're actually seeing what the real seas of Mars would look like. They fill in the lower elevation areas first, so you get gorgeous crater lakes and northern hemisphere seas and all sorts of things, because that's what Mars really looks like. And yet strangely, of all the dozens and dozens of games that have ever been set on Mars, we're kind of alone in that. I'm sure there are a couple of others, but for the most part, games set on Mars aren't really set on Mars. And that's a huge missed opportunity. One of the ways that I often talk about this with people is in terms of movies. Now imagine that you were a film director and you realized that no one in history had ever set a movie in Paris. Bru. It had just never been done. Nobody had ever thought to make a movie in the city of Paris. What an incredible opportunity that would be. You could do anything. There's so many cool parts of that city. There's so many different genres of film that you could set in Paris. You could make a, a romance, of course. You could do a period piece set during World War II or the Middle Ages or anything. You could have the main character have a spiritual awakening in a cathedral. You could set a period palace intrigue story in the Palace of Versailles. There's so many different stories you could tell within the city of Paris. And here's the important part. The city of Paris becomes part of the story. It's such an incredibly beautiful setting, and there's so much there that you can dig into that it becomes part of the appeal. There's a reason that James Bond movies and plenty of others have traded part of their franchise on the idea of going around the world, going to exotic places. This kind of stuff is part of the story. It's part of the interest for the audience is to step into this life for a minute and explore what Malta is like, or what Japan is like, or what Kenya is like. Anywhere in the world, the location that you go is hugely important. And while it is a bit of a joke in the film industry that you're gonna set your movie in Paris, but you're actually gonna film it in Vancouver, uh -huh. there's still a lot of value to be had in showcasing the real location. It's tough to beat having the Eiffel Tower in the background. It's tough to beat walking down the streets and passing all the cafes and shops that are real and authentic to that location. Which is why when movies are set in some place like Paris, some place that's very well known, very iconic, oftentimes they go film in Paris. They may do some of the shooting in Vancouver. They may do some of it on a soundstage in Los Angeles, but for a lot of the exteriors, they're gonna go to Paris because it helps build the story. Now, obviously, if you have a story set on Mars, you're not gonna go to Mars to film it. At least, not yet. But there is a middle ground between what most movies do, where they just get a generic red landscape and treat it like Mars, versus going to Mars. And that is to depict real places in the solar system. Now there's a term that a lot of you may have heard, which is hard science fiction. That's what Terra Genesis is. Hard science fiction is a sci-fi story that is deeply rooted in real science, in real possibility. You might take as an example of hard science fiction, The Expanse. It's got some fantastical elements, but a lot of it is very realistic. And you can compare that to a story like Star Wars, also set in space, but it's got magic and wizards and all sorts of things. They don't really put a lot of effort in Star Wars to getting things scientifically accurate. And that's fine, that's not what we look for in Star Wars. Star Wars is soft sci-fi, The Expanse is hard sci-fi. But that's not really what we're talking about here. I'm not talking about basing your story in science top to bottom. 
We're just talking about the setting. We're talking about capturing the magic of the James Bond moment where it cuts to Morocco and you realize, ooh, we're going to an exciting new place in this story. That kind of thing is possible in science fiction. And there is so much untapped potential in our solar system alone for new stories to take us to new places that really exist. Now this isn't a totally new idea. There are movies and TV shows that have taken us to the surfaces of other worlds and tried to do them justice. There are plenty of movies set on the moon and more or less get it right. There are several movies set on Mars and a few of them, like The Martian, try to locate the character in a specific place on Mars and depict that area accurately. But once you get past the moon and Mars, it starts getting really thin, really fast. For all the public fascination with Pluto, there aren't a lot of movies set on Pluto. Venus is the very next planet in the solar system. And I've only ever encountered one thing set on the surface of Venus. And that's a TV show called Defying Gravity for one episode. Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, any world in the solar system. Maybe you've heard of one movie that goes there. There's the Europa Report set on Europa. Io, Ganymede, Callisto. There are hundreds of planets and moons in our solar system that have never been touched. Nobody has ever even tried to bring those worlds to life on the screen. And here's the crazy part. These worlds are awesome. You don't have to just be a sci-fi nerd to fall in love with these locations. They're dramatic, they're exciting, they're beautiful. Any kind of story you wanna tell, I guarantee you there is a world in our solar system that would bring a huge amount to your story. You wanna tell a survival story? Mark Watney had it easy on Mars. If he had been left behind on Venus, he wouldn't have lasted a day. There might be life under the ice of Europa. On Miranda, you can go base jumping off of the tallest cliff in the known universe. Mars has the tallest mountain in the known universe, the deepest canyon in the known universe, one of the largest impact craters in the known universe. Mars has incredible locations, and that's the easiest one of the bunch. And yet no one is doing it. No one is making movies and TV shows that actually explore these locations. It's literally like realizing that you're the first filmmaker to make a movie set in Paris. You have entire worlds available to you, actual places that people will one day walk, and you could be the first person to make a movie that brings that place to life. You could take audiences to the surface of Venus for the first time. Humans have been looking up in the sky and watching Venus for millennia, and you could be the first person to bring that to a mainstream audience. It absolutely mystifies me why nobody's doing this. Like, why is there not a gold rush of filmmakers trying to make movies set on other planets? It's insane. And if you're not convinced that this is a great idea just on its own merits, consider this. Space is booming right now, and people are getting more and more interested in exploring the solar system. The age of the silver spacesuit and the laser blaster, I mean, it's still around. But there's a large and growing appetite for stories that take us to real places, for movies that depict how things would actually exist in space. There is an entire genre of film and television that isn't being tapped right now. So if you're out there and you're a writer or a filmmaker or a game designer, consider setting your next story on Venus or Mars or Mercury or Io or Europa or Ganymede or Callisto. There's so many worlds out there and each one is unique. Each one has unique challenges. It has unique settings. It has its own look, its own art. There's so much out there that you can use free of charge. It's as easy as setting your movie in Paris. That's all I've got for this week. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can get all of our upcoming episodes. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming your way. In the meantime, post in the comments and let me know what you'd like me to discuss next. And as always, happy terraforming.